Hi, welcome to Programming with Mesh. In this session, we will generate an APK and Android app bundle from the to-do list app for publishing in Google Play Store. And we do this with comments and also with the help of Android Studio. In the preview session, we added more features to the to-do list app and made it more functional. Now we prepare the app so that we can get the Android output from it. First, in the package.json file, we change the name. Then we go to this path in the Android folder. And in the strings.xml file, we change the name of the app. Now we can do this manually to customize the app's launcher icon. Using this site, we can generate the required dimensions for the icon. We will upload the desired icon in this section. And uncheck iOS for the icons to be created for Android only. Well, the icons is generated. The files we want are in this folder. Now we go to this path in the Android folder. And replace the downloaded files in this folder. Each folder contains icons corresponding to a specific size of the device screen. And we need two icons in each folder, one of which has a round extension. And in this method, we have to create the round icon ourselves or duplicate the same icon. The best way to create app icons is to use the Android Studio app. To do this, open the Android folder in Android Studio. And right click on the app folder and follow the path new image asset. Now from this section, we select the image we want. And from this part, we resize the image to the desired size. Now in this tab, we select the background color to match the image. Well, I finished to create new files and replace the previous images. These are Git alerts that I close. Well, as you can see, the images are created correctly. Now, suppose we want to rename the package as well. Go to the Android manifest.xml file. This name is created by default and in two parts of the project name. Search for it throughout the project using the Ctrl Shift H keys and replace with the name of your choice. Here, for example, I select a three-part name and replace it with all. I exit from Android Studio so that I can rename folders based on the new package name. Well, I created the folders in this path based on the new package name. Now go to the Android folder in the terminal and sync the Gradle. For more information on generating an installation file, go to this part of the React Native document. Here it's explained that Android apps need a private signing key. We can use this command to generate this key. We create this key in the app folder. 
In this command, we replace the alias name and the key file name with the desired name. By executing this command, we will be asked for the key details which we will enter in order. And at the end, we confirm them with the word yes. Well, as you can see, the key file is created in the app folder. Now we need to add these variables to the gradle.properties file so that we can use the key specifications we created. Enter the key file name, alias, and passwords we defined for the key here. Now we need to make changes to the build.gradle file in the app folder. First, in the sign-in configs object, we add this part. In fact, the variables used here are the variables we created in Gradle.properties. And in this part, we have to change signing configs to release. I set the value of this variable true, so that when the APK is generated, several files are created to use different CPU architectures. And to reduce the size of the final APK file, I also make this variable true. Also, if I set this value to true, in addition to APK for different CPUs, a universal APK will also be generated. Now go back to the Android folder and run the assemble release command in Gradle to generate APK files. Well, now in the build folder, we go to this path and as you can see, the APK files have been created here. These files are used for direct installations, but if we want to upload the app in the Google Play Store, we need to create a file called bundle. To do this, we use the bundle release command in Gradle. Well, this file is created in this pass in the bundle folder with the AAB extension. The size of this file is almost equal to Universal APK, but when installed on the user's device throughout the Play Store, due to the user's CPU architecture, less size will be downloaded. Finally, using this command, you can install the app in release mode and test it, so that there is no problem. Well, as you can see, the app is installed properly. And also its icon and name have changed. Now we want to follow the process of generating APK and AAB files using Android Studio. To do this, open the Android folder of the project in Android Studio. And using this button, we first sync the Gradle. Then from the build menu, select this option. 
In the window that opens, first select the Android app bundle. In the next step, we can give the address of the existing key or create a new key like the one we created using the command. Here I give the address of the same key we created. And then I enter the information about the same key. If you want to publish the app in the Play Store for the first time, don't uncheck it to create a dedicated key for you to upload to the Play Store console. In the next step, select the release and click the finish button. Well, the file is created successfully. Now we do the same steps to generate APK files. Here it's better to choose both versions for signature version. Well, there is a problem with Gradle access to memory. To solve this problem, go to the gradle.properties file. And remove this line from the comment to increase Gradle access to memory. Now we try again. And as you can see, this time the APK files is generated correctly. So there we go, we generated an APK and AAB file from our React Native project to publish it in any store like Google Play Store. So in the next video, we will learn how to upload our app in the Google Play Store. Now if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next session.